man le ni beyen o ni le loko lo de lajo asiku dede asiku yi hello everyone it's adirunke again today i'd like to talk about the verb pa pa that's the verb pa pa and why have i chosen this verb i did an intensive one man research to see which of the verbs is the most versatile the most uh reusable the most uh i wouldn't say the most common but something about this verb makes it uh very adaptable you can fit it in several situations it's the same spelling through and through and the same toad mark or or in this case lack thereof because ba the tone that you put on the on the if you see my video on how to put toad marks on yoruba words you divide the word into syllables you know and then you put the toad marks on the vowel depending on how the unit of pronunciation sounds usually it would either sound like do or sound like re or sound like me if it's re which is it is in this case because ba re you know that's the that's the sound that it makes ba re in the past i suppose in someone like jai crowther's days you could put uh, a horizontal line on the vowel if the the sound the tone is re like pa but now we just leave it empty we just leave it uh, not empty we just leave it black we just leave the vowel as it is so re pa re so that's the verb the meanings i'll give you examples and i'll talk about the meanings that it could have but the meanings that it could have tend to align you know with some of this so you could use pa when you're saying you know to make to feel or suffer in the case of a being pami you know hunger is making me to feel something to to suffer i'll get to it it's it, it's also used uh in the sense of winning and defeat to turn off or extinguish or quench and then to kill or murder ba is the verb <laughs> to break a hard knot a calabash um anything that you can break break you wouldn't necessarily use it for something that shatters when it breaks but anyway uh to break and then to arch to arch the way that a duck or, or a mother hen uh hatches their young and then to rob to rob you would also use ba to tell a tale to tell a tale or to tell a lie you would also use pa these are just a few you can use it even more extensively than some of these examples so isn't that awesome isn't that awesome i think it's a very important verb to learn just so that you're not confused when you see it used in one situation in one context and then you see it used in a completely different context ba could be kill or murder ba could be kill or murder and don't make a habit of it because sometimes i just upload random images um beside the letters on my slideshows and sometimes i'm very specific about what i put i'm passing on a, a message that could sometimes be political or be social so uh i'm not saying make a habit of it uh, because i mean not always be passing a message with the images beside the text but many times i do and these ladies and gentlemen ara <laughs> tiebi is what uh is in vogue now minus the machete people are 
killing other people with ropes and and with hands and strangling and with knees okay <laughs> so i suppose that's that's uh that's one of the the <laughs> i i don't want to swear so an example for ba when it's used to infer kill or murder is Derek Chauvin ba George Floyd Derek Chauvin ba George Floyd Derek Chauvin killed George Floyd ba is also ach ba is also ach an example for that would be adiewakpa omo meta adiewakpa omo meta adie hen adie or you could say agbebo adie no, i've talked about uh, the yoruba names for domesticated animals in separate videos adie hen wa our if you see my video on pronouns and it's really old so i have to probably go over it again and make better slides uh, but the messages are still relevant in the current one that is available uh wa hour uh you would see okay back to what i was almost uh, going to talk about if you see that video on pronouns you would see pronouns in their subject forms and in their object forms wa is our ba is to arch ba is to arch omo children child or children in the collective meta three so you can't say three child you say three children in this case you say three chicks because uh, i guess per the english language that's more specific to chicks our n arched three chicks our n arched three chicks adiawakpa omo meta moving on ba could be rob ba could be rob or rob on ba could be rob or rob on an example sentence or i guess these are two separate sentences ba fi para ba fi para ba is to take ba is to take a here is it this is a verb vowel pronoun i didn't really go into it in the pronoun video in detail do me re me me i actually came up with a formula that would make this simple to learn ori ori is she butter if you want to say ba take the she butter you'd say ba ori take the she butter if you don't want to mention she butter, you just want to say take it. The it would be determined by the last vowel of the verb. You know, the you want to make a pronoun with the verb. Take it. Ba. The last letter would de would determine the letter of the pronoun of the it, and the the tone mark on the verb so in this case ba take would determine the uh tone mark on the pronoun the pronoun being ba so a uh, it do mi re ni mi re is the formula that i came up with and i tried to make it a word <laughs> i don't want to this is, this is probably going to confuse you anyway so i'm going to talk about it soon ba take it ba take it ba take a it fi use fi means use but it, you want to make an english sentence out of it so i suppose you bend to the rules a bit use it too you put the it too you know in the brackets because you want to make a sentence with it para para is not an original word it's a combination of two words ba which is rub and ara which is the body your body and if i want to intentionally put the word your 
In this statement, ba fi para e would be what it would, which means something different and something dark. Ba fi para when you're you want to okay, it means take it, use it to rub your body when you like kind of transliterate it. Then when you translate, take it, rub it on your body. So back to what I was going to say, you would notice that I put your I didn't your is not necessarily part of the sentence the the specific sentence few para i put it in italics not really italics but i changed the fonts uh to to make you know that your is not uh, specifically fees use use it to para rob body but i inferred the your because if i was to say fi parae although you can say that you know when you're referring to lotion if i say ba fi parae i'm saying take it kill yourself with it use it to kill yourself your body ara could be body in, you know in a context it could also be self in another context so if i say ba fi parae you know people don't really say that when they are saying take it rub it on your body so they would say para. as a matter of fact if you're referring to someone else take it rub it on someone else's body ba fipa prince lara <laughs> i'm being naughty at this point <laughs> My personality is coming through, isn't it? <laughs> uh, uh, I suppose you can hide forever. Da, fi pa lara. You know, take it, rub your body with it. You won't say fi pa rai or you know fi pa rai or fi pa la fi fi pa. You don't no. So. Uh, this is the way to put it the person would know that what you're saying is take it rub it on your body but you say, if you say that's a bad meaning so you can stick with this take it rub it on your body also means to <laughs> where we're going is a bit far so by the time i get to the end you will think pa means every single thing every single you will think pa is the only verb that exists in the yoruba language because it's so versatile pa could also be to turn off to shut off or to power off pa could also be to turn off to shut off or to power <laughs> i was going to say to power off <laughs> pa you know Iyara. Some people choose to leave the e in iyara out. By no yara, say wa nu yara. I suppose you could say that, but the full word is iyara. Ba ino iyara. Ba is to turn off, to shut off, to power. You know, turn off would apply to room lights anyway. Ba turn off. Ino the lights or lights. Ino the lights. Or light the bulb you know whatever is whatever brings the actually it won't be the bulb it would be the light itself anyway let's move on iara is the room i put off the off the room you know off the in brackets because we're going to make a sentence out of it wouldn't we the yoruba language is a separate sovereign language on its own so when you translate the yoruba language word for word to another to a different language like the english language sometimes you have to pretend like some of the words that you use in english are you know with the yoruba translation because what i'm basically saying is you can't translate the yoruba language word for word into another language and it would make sense and you know and vice versa you can't do that you have to fill in here and fill in there you have to actually translate not just transliterate turn off the light of the room is what it is when you transliterate and when you translate you get turn off the room light 
turn off the room light. Pa also means to extinguish, to put out, to quench. To extinguish, to put out, and to quench. So the major themes so far you could say, uh, actually there are different themes. Rob on, for example, has nothing to do with murder or kill. Atch has nothing to do with turn off. So, you know, these are separate, sovereign, independent, you know, what other words? Uh, separate. I don't know if I've said se separate meanings, you know. Pa inaru. Pa inaru. Panaru. If you're speaking fast, it probably sound like this. Panaru. Panaru. Pa inaru. Pa is to extinguish or to quench. Ino is fire or the fire, you know. <laughs> We're going to make a statement out of it. Aru is the fireplace that you use for cooking. So how it works is you take three big stones and I suppose when I go to Nigeria, I'll show you <laughs> um, three big stones and then you take sticks, preferably dry, <laughs> your wood, you know, and the open spaces between the stones. And the purpose of using three stones is, is that it, is that it helps the uh, the pot stay on, so that the the pot doesn't flip. The contents of the pot don't flip. They are firmly secure. That's why we say arometa tiokin dobenu aru. The those three stones make an aru, make a fireplace, extinguish the fire of the cooking fireplace is what it would be when you translate right? when you translate it would be extinguish or quench the cooking fire extinguish or quench the cooking fire i will probably make a video about arumeta tiokindobin it's usually something you say when there are three like really close people they could be friends they could be you know whenever there are three close people you you usually use uh, the three stones that make up the aru as a metaphor for those three close friends or three close persons. Aru that tiokin dobedu that does not pour away the soup or the stew, you know, obe soup or stew. The three stones that don't make the soup pour away. So, whenever you see three friends, like three friends that make things work for whether separate persons or for one another. I'll talk about it separately. Another word. <laughs> I know some people <laughs> don't, don't be mad and don't be confused. Don't be confused with practice. You'll get it. So don't worry. And I'm working on one-on-one -on -one lessons, but, uh, more details, more dits about that, uh, soon. Ba is break or crack a hard knot or calabash when you use ba in this context and i'll give an example of course it would be to break or crack a hard knot or calabash your mother sends you on an errand to go to ya labake i'm thinking of another traditional name Yaweru, you know, sends you to Yaweru and says, Bami Bayowa, please get me salt. And on the way, maybe you were <laughs> having a conversation with your friend and uh, maybe you were watching the Ayo game and you forgot, and I'll talk about Ayo soon, and you forgot to uh, get home quickly. Maybe in the course of playing rough or something, the calabash breaks and then you go home and say, Yami, or you say Iyemi, or Yeyemi, um, <laughs> or Mamami, whichever one you choose to use. Emma Binu, you know, <laughs> you don't want to specifically say that you've cracked it or you've uh, broken it. So <laughs> you say it fell from my hands. She may reply by saying, Ah, but we're you know, 
she she's saying she's obviously expressing <laughs> a surprise plus plus is it would you even say irritation but like unpleasant surprise that uh you've broken yet again another calabash if she reacts that way it's most likely that uh, it's not your first time of of breaking calabashes in the house so it may not be literal what she would be saying at that point is you've broken all the calabashes but it may not be literal she could be said you've almost broken all the calabashes it's one thing to learn the yoruba language it's another thing <laughs> to learn the uh, the culture even with learning the language it's one thing to know a word to know how to pronounce not pr pronunciation can even be excusable <laughs> don't even sweat it uh, although it, it can be important but you know it's one thing to know how to pronounce properly it's another thing to know how to put tone and this is just language specific i've not even gotten to the culture it's another thing to even know how to uh to put tone marks on words correctly take a word like oko for example it's a different word when it has a different tone mark i'm going to explain it further when i do tone marks part two it's a separate word when it has a separate tone mark it doesn't mean the same thing obvious even when it it's the same tone mark. this one this uh, word pa, you know no tone mark still the same word but see the many meanings that it could have so oko oko <laughs> all right <laughs> hashtag i did run kevin risque okay uh, and i'll talk about it i'm probably going to dedicate a video to it if you're learning the yoruba language it's not so much knowing how to pronounce you can't um and it's a pity that even many Yoruba people in Nigeria don't know how to don't know how to put tone marks on Yoruba words correctly. It's so simple. You literally have three options: do, re, mi, and you choose. Okay, let's 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 go back to risque. Adirunke, oko is farm. Oko <laughs> is the um. <laughs> The male <laughs> Oh my goodness <laughs> I'm amusing myself Oko is farm mm -mm. Oko is the um the don't worry I'm not uh, particularly fascinated by it but I'm trying to entertain the ladies who are so uh, the male genital area so when you write okay oh and you want to say my farm my father's farm is big <laughs> so people already know where i'm going with this you write uh, you want to write my father's farm is big but you write <laughs> my father's <laughs> is big you know <laughs> Be simply because you've not put, put a tone mark tone marks on that sentence someone would think what is she, why is she telling me that her father's mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, is big you know but what the person intended to say was my father's farm is big so without tone marks <laughs> without tone marks especially if you're not using voice because when you're using voice you know obviously you know what the person is saying but when you're writing it down without tone marks <laughs> okay <laughs> you're talking to your friend and you're trying to boast about the fact that your father has a big farm in Ota and <laughs> and what the person is reading perhaps they already had a form of attraction to your father <laughs> what they're reading is my father's mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. he's big you know they would be extremely confused uh, so um anyway it's one thing to learn the yoruba language it's another thing to learn the yoruba culture <laughs> so uh okay let's move on Bobo is all, Igba is calabash, or you know, 
calabashes because you've said all you can't say all calabash you know and, and at that point you know that it's more than one so all calabashes and this is just english specific i'm just trying to make it make sense you know, in english lo ni o are the two words that make up the word lo ni is is or her you know what is or are what or is or are simply depending on the sentence structure or you or you T is have or had, ba is to crack or break. So it's used to emphasize the gogo, you know, the all. As a separate word, without the gogo, it could be finished. Moti I have finished, you know, that kind of thing. So, ton. but in this case, it's more or less just emphasizing the gogo. All calabashes are what you have. <laughs> break finish <laughs> this is nigerian english this is yoruba english that's why a lot of nigerians when they get outside the country or you know they uh, they go to a country where uh, you're better appreciated when you can really just drive the point home with fewer words nobody wants to listen people don't have the tolerance many people complain that we say sentences in the passive voice just because our mother tongue when you translate it is passive when you translate to english is passive all the calabashes that are what you have broken you know when you try to flip that you've broken all the calabashes or you've almost broken all the calabashes so it's not literal ba could also be to tell a lie to tell a fable to tell a tale to tell something that isn't real you can't say pa oto oto is the truth you can't say pa oto you have to say pa iro iro is a lie a falsehood a fable a sentence would be makpa iro fun ara are mo makpa iro fun ara are mo or you could say makpa ro fun are mo in older Yoruba, you would say arare. In newer Yoruba, <laughs> twentieth and twenty-first century Yoruba, maybe a little bit even earlier. And by a little bit, I'm probably saying one or two centuries earlier. You say e mo. So ma paro fuare mo or ma paro fuare mo. However you choose, ma is don't, do not, don't. Ma is to tell, and like I said, it's specific to telling something that isn't real or true. Iro is lie or lies. Fu for ara ara could be self or body. Re your ara re ara e. Uh, sorry, I was going to say ara e. Ara re ara e. You know, your mo anymore anymore. Don't tell lies for, but it's what it is. But when you when you try to make it fit into the English standards too, don't tell lies to yourself anymore. So yes, that's the it's the same way when you translate. Don't lie to yourself anymore. Don't lie to you. Don't tell lies to yourself anymore. This is a message for somebody. Makpa irofun ararema. Makpa irofun rema. Don't tell lies to yourself anymore. Stop lying to yourself. Ba could also be to win someone in a game. In the case that it is most often used in, it's the uh, <laughs> the IO game. Very interesting game. Example sentence would be O kole pa mi la yo Iro Iro la O le pa mi la yo Iro Iro la O le pa mi la yo Iro Okay, I'm playing I'm playing, sorry O kole pa mi la yo You could say O le pa mi la yo O o le pa mi la yo O you ko ko is older you know you could say oh you could say oh o is not le is can pa is to win or to defeat <laughs> one and the same to win or to defeat
Mi, it's me. Mi, it's me. La yo. Ni ayo are the two words that combine to form la yo. Ni ayo. In the ayo game. In the ayo game. And I have to teach you how to play ayo. I have to, if I start to teach it now, this is another two hour video. <laughs> That's risky. <laughs> I'm going to stop people from watching my videos one by one. Not a good idea. Um, but I'll teach you in a separate video. It's so simple. And it's, uh, you have to be very calculated. If you see the image that I put right beside it, you would see what a typical IO board looks like. You cannot, you not can, <laughs> you cannot defeat me or win me in the game of Ayu. Oh, le kwamila yo. Oh, ya. Bossy dia yo. Yata. Oh, you wanna mop all le kwamila yo. Baban la ro. So, you can. <laughs> When you want to play the IO game, you boast, all right? And then you have spectators that, that hype you up and gas you up. The next one, don't get tired. Don't get tired. We have a long way to go. See, when I said, see, I, I should be, I, I need an award or something. Am I right? Because the fact that I was able to detect that this is the most versatile verb, in the Yoruba language, someone buy me a coffee or something. Oh, <laughs> uh, anyway, I'm kidding. Ba, eating or beating. It's non-violent. Most of the time, you use it for the rain. Eating or beating. When you when you're saying violent beating, that is glue. <laughs> Even from the sound of it, you know that uh, how high a word goes or how low it goes in certain contexts. In certain contexts, sort of gives you a vibration, gives you a vibration. Ashe, for example, I spoke about it in the Ashe video. Ashe, ah, it's grounded on earth, it's grounded on the plane. Ah, and then she, you know, you raise it higher, it goes into the universe. You raise the energy, you raise the energy with that word so that the wish would come to pass you ground it and then you raise it but this is the more spiritual aspect of word formation and more ancestral and this is like see i'll never get tired of making yoruba related videos i'll never run out of things to talk about because they're just different facets it's beautiful <laughs> uh, but you know how i feel about the language and culture Ba is to eat or beat non-violent most of the time you, you use it for the rain like i said ojo pami ojo pami ojo is rain mm. whenever you see <laughs> if you've been watching my videos for a while you would recognize this whatever you see mm, as a standalone word it's one letter but it's a standalone word and it's the exception mm, and mm. whenever you see them as standalone words they are vowels and consonants at the same time mm, does not appear it's like one of the eden vowels it doesn't appear in the uh, list of the standard list of vowels that we are allowed to because usually we don't put uh tone marks on consonants we put them on yoruba vowels a a a e o o o mm, is one that we're allowed to put tone marks on as well Whenever it's a standalone word, it starts being ni. Ni is the letter in Yoruba. Ji, ki, li, mi, ni. Ni is what it is when it's a letter. But when it's a standalone word, you know, at that point it's a word, not a letter. Mm, is what it is. Ojo, mm, pa, mi. Ojo, pa, mi. Mm, that's mm. It's a consonant and a vowel. So it becomes a two spirit letter or word you know if you will it's both a vowel and a consonant i love the word rain is pa is to eat or bit me is me 
rain that, that's why you probably hear a nigerian specifically a yoruba person say rain is eating me or rain is beating me we like to personify a being kwami hunger is killing me hunger is making me suffer i'll get to it soon rain is beating me rain is eating me you know when you say rain is fall um falling on me it doesn't english words don't care i suppose that's why even with music and many things when it comes to the black people there's a bit more expression physical and emotional expression than other certain cultures because even the words are more expressive rain is it, it's not just falling on you you would say it's falling on you when it's like a leaf that is just landing on your skin gently but if you've ever been in a rain particularly a heavy one you know that the rain is not just falling on you you know which is i suppose relatively the uh, accepted or the acceptable translation which i've put here on this slide but rain is eating me or rain is beating me it doesn't necessarily infer that it's a it's a violent beating or a violent eating you know but it's eating you that's what is really happening you know so rain has been personified um in the description it's a personified description rain is falling on me is what it would be translated to i suppose ba is to bruise ba is to bruise otifi arakba is an example otifi arakba mi re 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 otifi arakba i'll teach you maybe i guess in my one-on-ones or something i just suppose i'll let the students choose what they'd like to learn <laughs> please don't ask me any, anything difficult when i do start like uh don't, don't i'm a student of ifa myself so please i'm not uh, an ordained priestess yet so don't ask me tough Eva questions <laughs> but uh anything else ask me <laughs> o tifi arapa o is he or she t has or had Fi is use or used. Ara is body or self. We're talking about bruising, so let's just say body. Ba is to bruise, you know. E or she as or had used there. <laughs> There's an invisible there. <laughs> body to bruise is what it would be when you translate, transliterate it. It's rough, isn't it? E or she as used their body to bruise so when you translate it because different language different standards you don't have to um, put the yoruba language down for the english language okay <laughs> he or she has or had a bruised body he or she has a bruised body he or she had a bruised body the language is evolved in comparison to certain languages and i wish i do because we we've even before the europeans came we've had uh battles with the fulani and when you go to ilori <laughs> there's proof of it till this day um the, we've had the portuguese okay they named what we call lagos i suppose we defy the because it's supposed to be pronounced lagos <laughs> or something like that but we say lagos uh, the original name, of course, is Eko. Okay, when the Portuguese came and they did engage in a bit of slave trade, we've 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 taken blows from different cultures and persons over the years. If not for the resilience that we have, we're supposed to be wiped out by now. When you think about the things that we've had to go through as a race with the influences of these different cultures you know our language has been affected not necessarily too positively with the islamic uh, <laughs> thing for example and how it has influenced not only how many yoruba men began to treat women just because they <sighs> something entirely different was introduced to them about how much 
women are worth <laughs> and how much has been used intentionally here or what women are worth it's amazing how many things got new new meanings the act of kneeling for example you know i was having like a <laughs> a thing with my ancestors and we were sort of going over even kneeling is according to yoruba people it's not an act of submission kneeling to and what okay our, our, let's say this is the 1200s kneeling to us is not the same as it is in england kneeling in england to that is to them is sort of like a form of submission to the queen and they don't go on their two knees two knees to us and the way that i was being told was it's a form of for the woman who kneels it's a form of fertility posture it's not a it's, it's not a submission posture you know it's a fertility that's why we say you know it's a fertility posture and so is prostrating okay it's a fertility posture but i i can't talk about it yet because even many adults yoruba persons don't know about it you just say oh kule, kule. <laughs> they, they want you see you ex they think that it means submission because obviously with the uh with what they've been told and the different cultural influences <laughs> and how many things have been interpreted they take it to be oh you know but with a close connection with the answer sometimes you have to go back to those who lived then and say oh can you explain this to me because they're willing to explain they're willing to tell you how it was originally so why not ask them you know so and they're not so difficult to reach they're right beside you uh so i was watching a clip of like the last <laughs> i love cartoons i was watching an avatar clip the last fight between fire lord ozai <laughs> sorry this is unrelated to the lesson and the avatar and the minute and i suppose this would be relevant in some way the minute that um the avatar was sort of wounded and he got to the avatar state he was taken to the av avatar state you could see like all the ancestors just lining up around him that's beautiful isn't it the, the cartoon actually is political is social is spiritual and it teaches you a lot of things not just about respect for the earth <laughs> but the balance of energies and as someone who <laughs> i'm pretty sure because I, I i like to mention my many past lives as someone who has been a monk you <laughs> know in, in a past lifetime <laughs> okay <laughs> i i particularly enjoy the cartoon <laughs> i've had all the past lives haven't i i'm tired and i'm stressed <laughs> i may not come back okay maybe one more anyway moving on another one is make ba could also mean make and it's used in relation to money you know i'll give you that example i'm going to uh, maybe soon talk about common sentences that you would need if you're going to nigeria especially you know in the parts of nigeria where yoruba is spoken you know mainly and i'm going to address eloni eloni is how much is it so that would be one of the common sentences that i would be um sort of talking about and giving you <laughs> elo is how much elo how much le le is a combination of two words ni and e ni is is or her or did <laughs> depending on the sentence structure on its own ni is is or her but you can't say how much is you make you know so you have suppose if you're translating to a language translating not just transliterating you have to consider the language that you're translating to so i put did here but in green e is you e is you ni would be what you would use instead if you're talking to someone that is older than you or two or more persons of any age our language with the way that our pronouns are set up they are not 
gender specific or there's no gender differentiation but uh, there is age differentiation how you would address someone that is your age mate or someone that is younger than you would be different from how you would address someone that is older than you or two or more persons of any age elo lekwa elo is how much le is ni and e pa is to make so you're using this in relation to money there are different words that sort of allude to make depending on the context there's she you know which is the most common to do to to uh, to create you know how much did you make another example would be mukpa owurekwete maybe someone said how much did you make and you don't want to give a specific number but you just want them to know that you made a lot of money mukpa owurekwete mukpa and this is not the only way of saying i made a lot of money you know depending on if you're selling you could say ah mota ajewa you know different ways but um, this is just the example that is specific to pa mopa owore kwete mopa owore kwete mo is i pa is to make the past tense would be you can't say i make a lot of mm, you could but this would not be the you will say you could say more but you know i'm making a lot of money in but in this case because there's no mm, it could be something that happened in the past you know i made a lot of money so pa is made owo is money requete is an adjective for that is um sort of describing money the noun money so requete is plenty mopa owo requete I made plenty money. I made a lot of money. Pa could also be to kill, but not literally. <laughs> not there's the literal. It could be literal, but if you're going to use it to infer something else, it may not necessarily be literal killing. To make to lose energy or suffer, like hunger. You know, hunger can do that. Hunger can make you lose energy and suffer. An example. That would be peculiar to this to this kind of usage of the word pa would be a bing pa mi a bing pa mi a b is hunger a b a b is different from a b <laughs> a b is family and the letters are different the letter that's that a b begins with is different from the one that a b begins with you know there's a and there's a a b d a a if you've not seen my video on alphabets <laughs> please do please do i suppose that would be the first place to begin but yeah please do a b is hunger mm, mm is is or her like you know like i was mentioning earlier that whenever you see mm, it indicates that the sentence is a present tense or present continuous tense mm as a standalone word and i explained that uh, at this point it's not just a letter it's a vowel and consonant together because ni is how you would say the the alphabet alphabet ni but when it's a standalone word like this and it's serving as is or her you would say mm. e bing pa mi pa is to kill it becomes killing because of the mm. like i've said whenever you see mm, it means the sentence is a pre is in present or continuous tense making to lose energy or to suffer you know me is me hunger is killing me hunger is making me suffer or lose energy and i guess suppose that would be the correct transliteration and when you translate you get i am hungry bah sort of alludes to drunkenness it alludes to drunkenness if you're using it as a verb it would mean intoxicate oti mpai oti is a drink there are different kinds of oti it doesn't have to be alcoholic there's oti eleni dodo there's oti olomi son. there's you know any kind of drink anyway that is W not really water or oil <laughs> i don't know <laughs> if anyone drinks oil but drinks in general are called or tea but usually they 
or used for like alcoholic drinks but originally it doesn't have to be alcoholic it's a drink or tea mm is pa is to intoxicate but because of the mm, you know it becomes intoxicating mm, pa, you know it changes the verb to a present continuous a present uh, tense eh is you or team pie or alcoholic drink <laughs> or tr actually it would be alcoholic drink because you are talking about intoxication so you've inferred that the kind of drink that it is is alcoholic is intoxicating you so your that would be the transliteration if you translate that it would be you were drunk and it could be when you use it as um when you say it to somebody, you may not necessarily say that they, oh, you're drunk, you know, because you, because they've taken anything. No, you may be saying that their words don't make any sense, that they are blabbering pretty, pretty much. So if you say, oh, you, oh, you must be drunk, you know, if you, I don't know if people say that in English, but in Yoruba, if someone says something stupid and you say, you know, uh, you know, you're saying you're yeah you're what well, you you are talking in the rubbish <laughs> you are talking in the nonsense <laughs> what you are saying don't make sense you are talking in the rubbish <laughs> so you're saying their words don't make any sense i'm playing a lot today what's going on <laughs> also i'm tired but i have to finish this pa when it's used extensively it could be destroy or ruin or betray pa when it's used extensively, it could be destroy or ruin or betray. I'll give you an example. If a rich person, maybe someone who has some kind of power over you, they don't have to be rich. Most of the time, though, <laughs> they usually have more money than you do. If they say, ma, pa, sa, ye, you know, ma, pa, sa, ye, ma, is I will. Pa is to kill. I'll tell you why it would be destroy or ruin. You know extensive use e is you saye is a combination of two words c is on aye is life you know or the earth you know i suppose th those would be the two major meanings that i could have but you could use it uh uh metaphor you could even call people i you know <laughs> i don't want to go into that but uh just say life or earth i will kill you on earth it's like i will kill you yet you will remain on earth if you are going to transliterate you sort of have to use more english words before certain things make sense we use in certain cases use fewer words and we get what we're saying to one another i will kill you on earth i will kill you yet you will remain on earth you're you're so at that point you're not saying I will kill you okay you're not saying that you're saying i will destroy or ruin you you know ah uh, what to is if you're if, if you see people talking gisting actually gossiping you know and they're talking about somebody and they say ah i want you to get a link what's it you know they've killed you yet you're not dead it's like they that's why i said earlier that i yeah sometimes could be people use it to represent like um <laughs> witches wizards all these people are, are demonized you know in nigeria people who have any so as long as you have some sort of uh <laughs> thing that is not in alignment with uh christianity or islam sometimes you are <laughs> then you become a part of the aye you know the people who live their lives to destroy other peoples is sort of what it infers sometimes it could be used to represent people in general but usually when you use it you're saying the people who devote their own lives to ruining that of others so when you say i ain't share you know these people are <laughs> must be xing you <laughs> or targeting you so when you, people are backbiting about someone or gossiping and they say that they are saying uh if they say what to pass away, they are saying oh although he's still living you know they've killed him they've destroyed him they've ruined him so 
may not be literal killing you can't kill someone and have them like still continue to live so you are not saying you will kill them you are saying you will destroy them okay <laughs> but extensive use again could also be put out of existence or relevance to make something irrelevant to put something out of existence an example would be what you pa or usually people would say what you pa in or i put it in brackets what you pa or what you pa in or both work what is day what is day you don't want to maybe you don't want to specifically mention you're using the pronoun day anyway t is have or had ba is to kill if it comes killed because of the t you can't say uh they have kill you know or they had kill you you have to say killed i suppose you know is fire or is talk or like a matter or a situation it could be situation but it's not it would be situation as a synonym for like matter yeah is that yeah is that what they have killed the fire of that matter what they have killed or they had killed the the fire of that matter or if you want to choose to lose to lose you know to leave you know out once you're borrowing you say they have or had killed that matter they have killed that matter they had killed that matter they have made the matter ir irrelevant or put it out of existence nobody cares nobody talks about it nobody gives a damn everyone wants to move on you know so once you buy in all on you while the consequences of that matter are still prevalent, are still significant to this day, nobody wants to um, to do better, suppose. With the American society, I... <laughs> oh my gosh. Some people are going to say, oh, well, how dare you have an opinion? Why are you saying anything? You're supposed to teach your and not say anything. You don't have to add your two cents. <laughs> uh, okay. In the American society, I feel like a lot of Caucasians are sort of defensive. You know, you have to quietly observe. Sometimes you have to step back to see what's really going on and I see that a lot of Caucasians are Defensive about having to bear the brunt of what their ancestors did at the end of the day This was 18 something. None of us were alive. Why should we have to deal with this? Blah blah blah, you know the consequences are still apparent, but everybody has the same Opportunity, you know, I don't have to deal with this and they consider it a form of shame. The fact that you've come as a cookie. And, you know, the funny thing is, with the way that past lives work, it's possible. <laughs> it's very possible for a person who was a Yoruba slave then in America to reincarnate as a European. You know, funny enough, it's absolutely possible for many of the white people that joined in the marches and the you know, those that were very anti-slavery and pro you know the black people's emancipation and all that in that period the ones that were very active many of them could have had past lives as slaves i know it's difficult to believe but the minute you do a past life regression for like the first time and you still see, see yourself as a completely different race as a completely different person then it suddenly hits you that at the end of the day the color of the skin after th this lifetime uh, or beyond this uh consciousness isn't 
all in all you know it's it's not the center of our existence it's one thing because you can't dismiss that in relation to the experiences that we have but uh it goes beyond that okay why would a person who was a slave want to come back to the earth as a white person this time is it that uh, it's a way of making them, them feel better that uh, oh you were a slave sorry okay take the white complexion this time and have a good time take care uh let's shove this this one into a pregnant woman's belly and call it a day it's not because uh <laughs> it's a f no it's not because one is better or more superior oh, oh you've served your time as a black person yeah take some white skin no it may be because by being birthed into a background maybe a white background they would be able to change certain things they would be able to reach farther whether it's lawmaking whether it's whatever they would be able to reach farther I'm not saying black people will not engage in the making, don't engage in the making of laws as well. I'm just giving that, I'm just giving that example. They may be able to change certain minds. They may be able to change certain foundational mistakes, you know, easier than they would if they came back with that skin color. But it's possible for a white person to come back as that same white person you know perhaps they were wrong in the past perhaps they were a slave owner is i'm not saying all the white people that lived there were, were slave owners but perhaps they were slave owner and by coming back this time they're coming to relearn they are coming to right their wrongs you know oh god please give me the chance to or oh, oh my egbe whatever please give me the chance to come back and make this right and fight that my people the people that are, you know my fellow white people will be better in this area by by engaging in some kind of that you know so it, it's very limiting when you think oh please i don't have to bear the brunt of what some white people uh, yes i'm white yeah they're my ancestors and that's my legacy but i don't have to deal with your mistakes know that you've come with that skin color for a reason you've come to address so it's like they've sent you for the ones who can't come back you know who perhaps that was their last incarnation because not every soul reincarnates for those who can't come back you are part of the light worker team you're part of the team that has come to make it right. You have a purpose. It's not to be defensive. It's not to, to internalize it as saying, oh, please, if I say anything about Black Lives Matter, it must be that uh, white lives are trash and white people are the devil. Not really. It's just to play your part in making it better. It's to You have a role to play in healing, you know, you have some advantage so you have a lot of work to sort of like you you have some responsibility to change the mind of people who look like you who you share the same col skin color with i'm not the most well-spoken person so i don't if i was to write it maybe i would do better but i don't know how to give <laughs> impromptu speeches but what i'm saying is you don't have to feel guilty or whatever for for making a sort of change you know the change starts with you you don't have to be defensive you know anyway ba could also be used in the pre pre <laughs> i can't say prepare prepare <laughs> pre pre okay <laughs> or claire <laughs> <sighs> is something you would hear uh, in relation to pre 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 I can't say prepare okay pre 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 <laughs> prepare <laughs> pre pre <laughs> okay I, I actually can't say pre 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 pre
when it's shrunk like that you know you don't see it this is like a shrunk version we yoruba people like to combine two three sometimes four words together make them one word just because when it's your native language you don't feel that you have to spell each word out you know you don't say is not sometimes you just say isn't you know so it's existent in the uh it's exists in the english language as well but it's to pre prepare pre ah well, I <laughs> is to clear or prepare. <laughs> Ile is what is on the ground, or Ile actually is the ground, but Ile here has been used to infer what is on, you know, the ground or what is what you have, whatever that needs to be cleared. More is to more means clean or like, you know, it could even be tidy. When you transliterate that when you put those words together prepare <laughs> prepare or clear what is on the ground and make it tidy that is sort of how i see the transliteration and when you translate it will be prepare <laughs> prepare for something that is going to happen okay or clean up and make tidy so if a festival is to take place and people are saying ah, is the act of preparation or the act of preparing because you could also call it the act of like cleaning up and making tidy so aku or eku you know i've pr probably made a video about uh greeting introducers aku eku ku you know sometime in the past but that's how you will greet if you're preparing for something. So anyway, prepare or ah, I said it right. Prepare. <laughs> oh, I did not. I did not <laughs> prepare for something that is going to happen or clean up and make tidy. It could also be close or uh, keep or preserve. Extensive use as well to close something. To, to preserve it you know to keep it to yourself an example would be mokpa akobimora mokpa akobimora mo is i pa is to keep or kept in this case it would be kept akbo is bag me is my mora is a combination of two words mo and ara mo is with or against against like you know in contact with not against as in opposing with or against ara is body or self when you put that together i kept my bag against like i said in relation to in contact with against my body so when you translate that it would be i held my bag close to my body or close to myself so there are adjective and i was trying to think of an adjectival example you know a situation where you would use ba as an adjective but i, I maybe i'm <laughs> maybe i'm too tired to think further because this took me hours just trying to look for the verb on its own and then making the slides i'm not complaining i love it i'm not complaining I wish I could like quit my job and just do this full time. But when I have to work full time, then it's so tiring. Adjective. Actually, adverb. Adverb. I'll give you adverb. Because I, I, I can't think of any adjective examples, I'll give you adverb. Example. So far, we've been talking about like situations where it would appear as a verb. Let's just talk about one or two adverbs. But when it's used as an adverb, you know, used after a verb, could be to the greatest or utmost or most extreme level until they, the recipient, when applicable, cannot take anymore. Usually you would use this for like, okay, let me just use the example of like beating. Oh, no, or you could say, oh, lu, pa, no, and lu are synonyms. No and lu are synonyms oh no he or she beat him or her remember that i told you that they are verb based pronouns they are verb based pronouns and what that means is instead of saying okay oh no ronke oh no you know he beat ronke he beat her the her or him 
would be determined by the last um, vowel of no, which is bit. So, no. It's like saying olu as well. The last, sometimes it's the last letters. Usually it would be a vowel anyway. The last vowel, it's usually a vowel, would determine like what the im or her would look like. So the im or her is the, is dependent on what the last um, letter of the verb is or the last like uh, vowel is. O, no, o, lu, o, ba, o, le, o, for. You know, it is determined by, but I'll get into it separately. He or she beat him or her. Pa is to stupor. He or she beat him or her to the point where they couldn't take it anymore. To stupor. Another example of like an, an adverb is like put or firmly or securely. Pa. It's like put, like stay put and then firmly or securely. An example would be Oduro pa. Oduropa i or she stands or stood, but is still i or she stands or stood still. Ah, so finally, <laughs> that would be the end of this video. If you have any questions, any easy questions, please don't don't ask me questions that I would have to <laughs> teleport to the 1700s to find answers to, please. <laughs> Actually, 1700s, I might still know the answer, please, but please don't ask me questions from like the 1100s. I would be so confused. Uh, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask me. Uh, please leave comments and let me know how you feel about this video. And subscribe to my channel and uh, turn on the notification bell or <laughs> click on it. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, please subscribe. And thank you so, so much for your support. Thank you to all my new patrons, Oshun Femi. Actually, now, be, now that I mentioned someone, I have to mention everybody. Thank you, Oshun Femi, who's my most recent patron. And I shall be rich. Thank you so much. Thank you. I love you. Thank you. And Orchestral Fantasy, you are the best. I love you. I don't remember your real name. You told me at some point. Thank you, Darius Bo. <laughs> love you thank you mike love you thank you jim uh, i like by jim thomas thank you so much i miss you in the comment section i don't see your comments so often anymore but thank you so much i love you and um, i don't know if it's omomola omomola yabumi thank you so much love you to francis smith Thank you so much. I love you. To so, Ayode Jiarulogu, thank you so much. I love you. And then to Precious, thank you so, so much. I love you. And uh, <laughs> and I love everyone <laughs> who has like supported me in any way, whether monetary or sharing my video. Or... God bless you. Thank you so, so much. I love everybody. Honest. <laughs> I love everybody. And I'll see you in the next video. Enjoy the rest of your day and goodbye.